and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Today, I'm joined by John Bradley, Head of Foreign Exchange. Welcome, John. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Well, we've had a lot of volatility and a lot of things so far this year, plenty of equity volatility, interestingly, a lot of treasury volatility as well. I was looking at the FX volatility. It was higher, but didn't seem quite so bad. Nonetheless, still, I guess there's always a challenging time, an interesting time, particularly now that we have the Fed on the move and arguably on the move a bit more quickly than I thought it was going to have to be. But that's where we are. So we've had the first rate hike from the Fed, anticipating quite a few and pretty quickly. So in that environment, you know, the question always is, what does the dollar do when the Fed is hiking rates? Well, I think the the, the key uh, topic there is is volatility, and um, I guess I, I always view, or we as a team always view, uh, FX as a derivative asset, and you know, FX doesn't usually move on its own. It's it's a function of what's going on in in other markets, and so um, a big increase in volatility on the, on the interest rate front, on the equity front, and also on the commodity front um, should feed into higher FX volatility going forward. Um, so that's something that it's a big change from the the environment that we've been in since you know basically 2015 or so. We've had um, about six or seven years where FX has been in relatively confined ranges, and we think that um, things could be very interesting in 2022. Uh, as you said, the Fed has hiked for the first time. Um, what we normally see going into a Fed hiking cycle is the dollar performs quite well going into the first rate hike, um, and then struggles a little bit in the, in the six months uh, afterwards. And the last four rate hiking cycles, the dollar has sold off by between three and a half and 4%, uh, roughly, uh, after that hike over the next six months. Uh, we kind of think that that scenario plays out again this time. Having said that, as you mentioned, uh, the Fed is continually repriced in the cycle. And, um, you know, just a few months ago, we were looking for, at the most, maybe 25 basis points per meeting from the Fed. And now uh, a lot of market commentary is is focusing on 50 basis points for the next few meetings. So that has been dollar supportive. But going forward, we think that that tailwind can start to dissipate a little bit and um, the dollar might may struggle. We think this year it could be quite interesting on the dollar front in that we think that there's going to be a lot of divergence between commodity currencies relative to lower yielding funding currencies. So, for example, we think that the dollar can trade uh, relatively poorly against commodity exporters like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand that are seeing big improvement to their terms of trade while still trading well against some of the lower yielding funding currencies like Japan, uh, Swiss franc, and to a lesser extent, uh, the euro. Well, let me pick up then on this idea of what's happening with commodities. Clearly, we've had just amazing gains, uh, certainly in oil prices, but not only uh, agricultural commodities, and anticipated, you know, not continued gains at the same rate, but certainly elevated commodity prices, that, as you pointed out, if nothing else, certainly volatility. So what is the impact then of the higher commodity prices for those commodity currencies and others? Yeah, well, we think you know, there's been a big boost of the terms of trade for the commodity exporting currencies within G10 space. That would be, um, you know, as I mentioned, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, Norway. So they've seen a big terms of trade boost, which we think um, is very supportive going forward. And the currencies have benefited from this so far, but they've also struggled a little bit because they're all risk on currencies. And because of the higher volatility we've seen on the rates front and on the equity front, it's been a bit of a headwind, and they haven't fully benefited from the, the rally we've seen in broader commodity prices. So we think as some of the equity volatility and some of the geopolitical current concerns start to ease, that um, that there's scope for the rally in, in the commodity currencies. And on the flip side, we think the, the funding currencies, they generally benefit when we're in a risk-off environment. While they've started to weaken, we think that there's a little bit more scope for for those to weaken as well. As a specific example, uh, there's been a lot of focus recently on the yen with the BOJ basically sitting on the sidelines and being reluctant to hike rates or move away from yield curve control. We think that there's scope for continued yen underperformance, especially relative to commodity currencies. Clearly, commodity is a, a big factor uh, for emerging markets, Latin America, EMEA, uh, and so on. Are there any other important themes that are that are driving emerging markets right now? Well, I think just to start with on the commodity thing, we are definitely in the camp that um, higher commodity prices will support commodity exporting emerging markets. Specifically, we see a lot of positives in places like Brazil, uh, Chile, 
to a lesser extent, Colombia and even South Africa. Again, they've seen a big boost to their to their terms of trades. Also, one factor that's been very supportive for all of these currencies is that they've been a little bit more aggressive on the rate hiking cycle, um, and they've actually been ahead of the Fed. The one that we've been focusing on the most recently is Brazil. The central bank in Brazil was very aggressive in hiking rates. It went from 2% to almost 12% now, just over the last nine months or so. We continue to think that they'll hike a little bit more. Uh, and that should be supportive of the currency. And, and then they're also getting the, the boost from a terms of trade standpoint. So, you know, and on top of that, positioning in, um, in fixed income markets in emerging markets has been relatively light, especially in Latin America. And so we're starting to see big inflows on the fixed income side and also on the equity side. And that can create this positive reinforcing cycle where a stronger currency then helps on the inflation front, which means that then the central bank can cut rates. As the central bank cuts rates, people want to own the bonds again. Then that sees inflows on the currency side. And then that can also boost equity markets and also see inflows on the equity side. So I think we're in possibly in one of these virtuous cycles right now in some emerging markets, specifically commodity exporters. The commodity importers, it's a little bit more of a headwind. Uh, and we're a little bit more focused on um you know, especially in Asia, we're a little bit more focused on Chinese stimulus and to the extent that um, that China may stimulate going forward and as they come out of COVID, that should be broadly supportive for a lot of the Asian central banks and their currencies. So that's something we're looking at rotating into as the year goes on. Very good. If I could summarize a bit of what you've shared with us, uh, again, that question about how the dollar performs, you said over at least the last four cycles, dollar tended to do well going into the first rate hike, struggled a bit for the six months afterwards, and you're looking for something similar this time. Qualification, though, is expectations keep rising for what the Fed's going to do. So that mm. uh, at the same time does tend to, to boost the dollar a bit, but nonetheless, maybe we'll struggle in the near term. If we think more broadly, globally, and particularly differentiating between commodity currencies and the others, so Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Norway, you pointed out on one hand, they're benefiting from the rally we've seen in commodities, but at the same time held back perhaps by these global concerns, particularly triggered by, by Ukraine and Russia. But if, when, hopefully soon, mm -hmm. uh, those concerns ebb, uh, you could see those commodity currencies do well as well as uh, EM commodity currencies. So the broad theme here is a rallying commodity prices, supporting commodity currencies broadly, and then specifically you hide it for EM, the fact that some of the central banks uh, were ahead of the curve and, and quicker than the Fed uh, in hiking rates. So that also ultimately should benefit uh, the currencies in the medium term. Well, that's all we have time for today. If you'd like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out our Investors Corner blog. For listeners who have devices with Alexa, you can ask Alexa to enable Investment Insights or search for Investment Insights on Amazon under the category Alexa Skills. My thanks to John for sharing his insights. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Please join me next week when I'll be speaking with Raul Cavallo about value investing. Until then, we hope you stay safe and take care. This podcast presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.